Hey everybody, it's me, BP1 from Britpop's React, and today I'm going to share with you 10 facts about Freddie Mercury you just might not know. Number one, he had more teeth than your average lead singer. That's right, Freddie's distinctive smile was the result of having four extra teeth in the back of his mouth, which pushed those at the front forward. He always refused to have his teeth fixed, fearing it would affect his vocal ability. But I think we all agree that our natural human features are those that make us individual. We're all individuals, remember that? Number two, he started writing Bohemian Rhapsody when he was still a student. That's right, friends from college in the late 60s recall Freddie endlessly playing and singing the opening line to Queen's greatest hit, On the Piano. He called it the Cowboy Song, remembers one, but he could never get beyond Mama. Just kill the man. Shut up, you it took Freddie five more years to finish the iconic tune. We have covered Bohemian Rhapsody on our channel. So go and check those out. We've even named our Mondays after them. Bohemian. Just kill the man. Three. He worked as a life model in art school. As a student at Ealing Art College in the 1960s, Freddie was often, well, broke. Desperate to buy a stylish pair of Levi's, he worked as a model at an evening life drawing class. We were given a towel to perfect our modesty, recalls a fellow ex-model. But I often think of all those old ladies who drew pictures of a half-naked Freddie Mercury. Well, I think Doris and Dora probably had a right eyeful. Easy, I'm getting changed here. Number four. He was David Bowie's roadie. In April 1969, unknown singer-songwriter David Bowie played a lunchtime gig in the canteen at Ealing Art School. Freddie helped carry Bowie's amp and helped build a makeshift stage for him out of canteen tables. Mercury never mentioned that first encounter when he worked with David Bowie all those years later. You can check out our 10 facts about David Bowie over on the channel. Bowie. Bowie, I know you were thinking it. Number five, he was responsible for the Sex Pistols. Wow, for them getting some key TV time anyway. On December the 1st, 1976, Queen were booked to appear on the TV show Tonight with Bill Grundy to plug their new album, A Day at the Races. The band canceled as Mercury had his first dental appointment in 15 years. Their replacement was the Sex Pistols. Well, we all know what happened next. Go on, you've got another five you seconds. Say something outrageous. You dirty f bastard. Go on, again. <laughs> you dirty f What a clever boy. What a f well, that's it for tonight. Midway bonus fact. Did you know if you don't smash that like button, the YouTube algorithm won't work and we won't be able to share this video with more people? Number six, in top shape after quarrels. Freddie himself told in interviews that he gave the best performances after having an argument or a quarrel with somebody. Apparently, he needed emotionally draining and conflicts laden conditions to reach top form on stage and rise above himself. Well, we hate each other, <laughs> but but we carry on. No, we sort of fight like cats and dogs, but I mean, we've always done that. I'm not saying that we sort of like completely hate each other, but it's just that, you know, there, there are fights, and, um, but we're not breaking up. We're still here. Well, why aren't you breaking up? <laughs> because we like it. We, lo we like being queen, actually, yeah. Among the well-known stories is the loud and violent argument with his then lover, Bill Reed, before a concert in Milton Keynes. Bill bit Freddie's hand so hard that it bled profusely. The performance became legendary. Number seven, he had female nicknames for his friends and bandmates, except one. Mercury used female nicknames for himself and most of his friends barring John Deacon, who was considered too masculine. Freddie was Melina, Brian May, Maggie, Roger Taylor, Liz, Alton John, Sharon, and Rod Stewart, Phyllis. Meanwhile, Freddie's former girlfriend, Mary Austin, became Steve, after Steve Austin, the six million dollar man. I've got my own nickname for BP too, Karen. He's a right Karen. He once got status quos Francis Rossi in a headlock. That's right, the great status quo Queen standoff happened backstage at Live Aid. 
Mercury and Francis Rossi were messing around with each other when Francis made a slightly too cheeky comment regarding Freddie's sexuality. Mercury responded by getting him in a grappling hold. If he wanted to have me, he'd have had me, admitted Rossi. I couldn't move. I feel like I'm in my own headlock just trying to get this jumper off. Number nine. He sent a Christmas present to Alton John from beyond the grave. At Christmas 1991, a month after Mercury's death, his friend Alton, Sharon, John received a package wrapped in a pillowcase. It contained a painting by one of Alton's favourite artists, Henry Scott Tuke, and a handwritten note. Dear Sharon, thought you'd like this. Love, Melina. Number 10. He was a cat lover who even talked to his cats on the phone. That's right, Freddie was infatuated with cats. He even dedicated several songs to his purring pets, such as Delilah, a song on the album Innuendo, in which cat-like passages can be heard. When he was on tour, Freddie always called home. The reason? He wanted to talk to his cats. At peak times, he had no less than 10 cats. Hello? There's no one there. Oh, sorry Jess, I thought I had my phone. Brucey bonus fact for you. He was a brilliant ballet dancer. During his live performances with Queen, he always showed a diva-like and artistic stage presence. Freddie was an outstanding ballet dancer. In 1979, he performed with the Royal Ballet. During the ballet performance, he sang Bohemian Rhapsody and Crazy Little Thing Called know about Freddie Mercury hopefully you can go away and have some more information up there thanks for joining us check out the channel and come subscribe with us till next time so goodbye from me BP1 he's a 20th century boy.